Right. Hey, Kevin, are you are you on? Were you able to see you? Hey, good morning. Hey, guys. Hello. Hey. Some of the things that you've said, Kevin, have really impacted me. And so I've, I know that you have a really important voice in the church right now. And what we're doing as a, a little church is... Um, we're kind of, we're growing in the season of, of COVID-19 and we're trying to, to ask the question, God, what are you saying to the church? And, uh, and what would you have us do? We're trying to follow Jesus in some pretty extraordinary times. And so I've posed those questions to you, Kevin, and, um, and kind of just invited you to say whatever you'd like to say. And then everybody else, um, Kevin's going to share with us and then we'll have some, some chance after that to ask some questions and have some dialogue around that. And so, Kevin, I'm just going to throw it over to you and thank you for being here. Well, thank you. And it's been so cool. I came in a little bit late to the gathering, but I was coming in right at the call to worship and I was, I wasn't exactly sure what was going on as people were sharing different prayers and different things. And all of a sudden I caught on and it was so cool just to hear the whole community. You know, you usually come to church and there's one guy, or one gal talking, and that's kind of all you hear. And to hear the voices of the people right as you're coming into the gathering was a real powerful thing. And I had my uh, video off and my um, uh, sound off, and uh, and I and I just I was feeling emotional right off the bat just coming into this room with you all. So thank you for that, and uh, thank you, John, for asking me and you know, trusting that, you know, the Holy Spirit was doing something, you know, in the interwebs to bring us all together. And, uh, and absolutely, uh, you're right. I mean, we're in a crazy time and um, uh, things are, are, are wild. Um, I'm stuck at home with my family. I'm, I've been married for 20 something years and I have four young daughters. Um, actually, they're not so young anymore. The, the oldest uh, is 20, and then I have 20, 18, and 16. And then we adopted a little girl from Vietnam, and she's eight. And so it feels like we're starting all over there. So you guys, that'd be a good thing to pray for. Like, you know, we, we were almost like empty nesters, and all of a sudden we started all, all over again. So, uh, but that's that's been fun and good. And we're learning a lot because obviously we've been kind of thrown for a loop. All of us have. Uh, it's a new world. It's uh, something, you know, some new things are happening. And um, if you follow this uh, old theologian called Walter Brueggemann, he talks about how in life we're oriented into a season and then we're thrown for a loop or disoriented. And that's when God has an opportunity to reorient us into a new way of living. And right now we have an opportunity to be reoriented into a new way of living and loving and relationship and discipleship and everything else. And so it's actually a pretty exciting time if we allow God to reorient us. If we try to fix it all, we're going to continue to be frustrated. So it's a time to lean in and surrender to him. So John asked me a few questions. I wanted to just kind of move through some little things that God had prompted me on and then would love to jump into conversation. All questions are open. Um, uh, please just listen in. And if God nudges you in one way or another, and jot that stuff down, and we can talk about it a little bit later. So uh, what am I hearing, you know, um, and I've been trying to listen in, because I think we're all trying to find answers, but um, if I were to tell you one thing, the first thing that kind of comes up in my heart is that uh, you would, uh, that we would take care of ourselves. I know that sounds probably pretty basic, but the first thing I hear from God is like, hey, take care of yourself. <laughs> take care of yourself and, and maybe take care of yourself and those around you, you know, to, to be mindful of what's going on around you. And I would say, think holistically, you know, mind, body, and soul, you know, so what does my mind need to be able to take care of myself? What am I learning? How am I uh, challenging my mind? Uh, what am I thinking about? What am I contemplating? How am I having meaningful and thoughtful conversations with other people about the things that I'm learning? Uh, think about uh, your body. How are you moving? And man, we have, I mean, so sedentary right now. Uh, I mean, how are you moving this body that God has given you? How are you taking care of your body? And uh, 
you know, think about that. I mean, a lot of it is how are you taking your care of your body with God? So I, I'm going on a lot of walks with God right now just to move and to be with him. And then soul, you know, how are you taking care of your soul? What are the things that are bringing you near to God? You have to ask that question. What brings me near to God? And that you would then start scheduling that in so that you can start taking care of your soul. Obviously, this gathering right here is one of the ways that you have, you know, said, I'm going to take care of my soul by being with the people of God, uh, being with the people that are trying to figure out who he is, what he's about, and how he's moving and leading us. So take care of yourself. Uh, one way that I'm uh, doing this, because the, the self is also emotional, there's a lot going on in here, especially in this time. There's loss and grief and all kinds of feelings and emotions. And a lot of times we don't know exactly how to um, voice those. And so the house church movement for a long, long time has had this um, way of kind of tapping into feelings. It's called sachet. Anybody ever heard of sachet? Let me hear something. No, nobody. So let me tell you what sachet is. Uh, it's just a little acronym for uh, a way to dig into your feelings. And this is just a, a thing you can use for yourself. And you can use this for your family, too. So here's what sachet is. S-A-S-H-E-T. Uh, the first S is sad. So, you know, what are you feeling lost about? Um, and so maybe you tap in and say, you know, am I feeling any loss? And then if you are, that's in the sadness category. Um, a is angry. Uh, what are you protesting? You know, is there something that's, you know, riling you up? Riling you is, by the way, a Southern word that I learned when I lived in Kentucky for a while. Rile you up. Okay, so what is riling you up? What's, what are you protesting? Uh, sacred, uh, I mean, scared is the next one. Um, uh, and that's all about what are you threatened by? So are you scared? Is anything scaring you right now? Any, anything frightening you right now? H is happy. What are you smiling about? Um, ex, uh, e is excited. Uh, what are you joyfully experiencing? Uh, and then T is tender. Uh, what do you uh, feel love towards? Uh, one of the um, things that uh, uh, sometimes, I don't know if you can see this. Uh, let me see if I can uh, blow this up for you here. Do you see this? These little spaces here. Sometimes if you can't uh, like give names to your words, maybe you just need to point to a smiley face or a sad face to be able to share your feelings that's what I do with my kids sometimes it's you know hey if you can't tell me if you can't verbally say it just draw it uh, and that's sometimes the best way that we can get you know into sharing our feelings but tapping into those six basic feelings helps you to then just kind of let people know where you're at and if you can start seeing that in the people around you uh, then you know how to love them better you see if you know somebody in your household is scared, then you're going to be a little bit more tender with them. If you know somebody in your household is excited, then you're going to jump into the, the, the excitement and the joy that is happening there. So it helps you to know what's going on in, with you, and it helps you to know what's going on around you. And you can do that, obviously, with yourself, with your household, and then that can trickle out into the community. You know, as you're Zoom calling people and trying to connect over different things is that's a good way to kind of check in in the heart. Uh, so that's the first thing. Take care of yourself and take care of others. Everybody cool with that one? Give me a big thumbs up. Yes. Well, perfect. Here's the second one. Uh, notice the nudges of God. Notice the nudges of God. Another, I mean, that's kind of simple, right? Like, you know, you brought this guy in and he's supposed to tell us some big, huge wisdom, but no, it's really actually basic. Notice the nudges of God and respond to them. Uh, and so I'm, one of my prayers for myself and one of my prayers for you is that you would have a hypersensitivity to the nudges of God, to the whispers of God, so that when he nudges you, you know it's him and you move and you respond. Uh, I think this is a time where we all feel a little bit stuck. And one of the best questions that you can ask when you're stuck is, what's next, Lord? What's next, Lord? And you can ask, what's next, Lord, for me? And he may say something like, go for a walk or open your Bible or take a nap. And that you would listen to that little nudge and obey him in it and respond to it would be just beautiful obedience on your part in the way of being a disciple. Sometimes his nudges move beyond us and he might say, 
call this friend or uh, write this letter or um, contemplate this part of your life. And then so he takes you in deeper places. And so I would say, uh, listen to God and respond to him. Listen to God and respond to him in real time, moment by moment. This is not quiet time by quiet time or gathering by gathering. It's moment by moment that we have this vertical connection as we're living uh, this kind of horizontal life. Um, there's a great verse in Isaiah 66, uh, chapter 66, verse 2. At the very end of Isaiah, he's had a lot of things to say, but in the end he says, this is kind of from God, but there is something I'm looking for, a person, simple and plain, reverently responsive to what I say. And uh, to that, I can say, like, I can do that. God, you want somebody simple and plain? I'm in. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just a guy. Uh, and you want somebody that's listening in, that's you know, always responsive and reverently responsive. That's a humble posture towards God, reverently responsive to, to you. I, I can practice that. I can, I can move through that. So the next little gift I would give you is, um, you know, please do all you can to listen well and obey well. Listen well and respond well. Um, so that's number two. Number two, everybody thumbs up with number two. All right, good. Everybody's with me. I love it. I love it. Here's uh, the third one that I came up with. And uh, that is that the, the church is the first expression or the, the home rather is the first expression of the church. The home, the household is the first expression of the church. This is not new to me. Obviously this is new Testament kind of stuff. Everything was kind of happening in households first and then it moved on uh, from there. And then there's this um, great group of people that have just, uh, embedded that value deep within me that everything that can happen in a church gathering anywhere in the world can happen in your home. Uh, and so there, there's something sacred about the places you're in right now. And, and you need to know that, that because God is there with you right now in that place, it's a sacred place and church can happen there. Church can happen there with you and God, with you and your roommates, with you and your family, with you and your kids. And so I would say, how can you start asking the questions of how does church invade or enter into my home? Uh, what does worship look like here? We experienced some of that today with song, but you know, the, the, what is the, the, the breadth of worship that can happen in your home where little songs, you know, start just springing up through the day or whenever you notice something beautiful, you just stop and pause and worship and just notice the awe of what's going on there. Or if God breaks in in one of those listening sessions where he's whispering or trying to nudge you that you just, you know, again, move into a place of worship because you have just been able to relate with the creator uh, so what does worship look like at home? What does communion or Eucharist look like at home? And you can maybe experiment there. What does fellowship, you know, being a family together, you can go back to that sachet thing. What does it mean to be together in fellowship in the home? Uh, what does discipleship look like? How are we discipling each other? Uh, because that has to continue to happen, uh, even in this place where we are scattered all over the place. How are we discipling each other? Not just waiting for somebody to disciple us, but maybe even figuring out ways and rhythms where we disciple one another in our homes. Um, and this has to be both from a gifting perspective and a leadership perspective, that the people in your home have different gifts and your household have different gifts. How do those gifts come up? So Check out 1 Corinthians 12 again and look through those gifts and start figuring out what, what are the gifts in our home and how are these released in our home? If somebody has just a great gift of teaching, let them teach. Even if that's your kid, if they're a great teacher, let them teach. If there's a great, great gift of encouragement, uh, bring that out. Encourage that out of those people and let that person encourage in your home, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and that's also a place, again, of leadership and influence. How, how do we share our influence and leadership among the home? That when somebody, somebody's gift rises up, you're like, I'm going to submit to that gift because it's a beautiful gift. I'm going to receive now and let that person lead. And so you start moving through what it means to be the church in the home because the home is the first expression 
of the church. And so what are the gifts, the leadership and the influence that need to rise up in your homes? And that you would just say, embrace it, just say, this is what it is. I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. Here's the last one. Everybody good on number three. All right, good. And then here's the last one. Um, we all still need rest. Uh, we may think that we're resting a lot because we're at home a lot. Uh, but I think that because our, our brain is going in a weirder pattern, uh, you know, we seem like maybe, I, I know I do, I feel like I'm working at all times of the day. Um, I find myself working at seven and at night and at, you know, five in the morning. I don't, I don't have a weird uh, set rhythm. I think I'm more tired now. I'm more exhausted emotionally and physically. And so I've got to find my place of rest and it's got to be different. And so I'm, I'm asking you uh, to reconsider Sabbath during this time. And remember Sabbath is this, this one day that God gave us and he said, I'm going to set it apart. It's going to be holy. And that's a day for me. It's a day other than all, I mean, it's different than all the other days. Uh, I want you to, to set it apart. Uh, and basically there's a different rhythm on that day. There's a different uh, volume level on that day. Um, there's a different awareness on that day that you would be more mindful of God and the people around you. Um, and you might think, what is it that brings me rest and refreshment and refueling? That's what that day is about. Um, what is it that um, just, just fills me up again so that on the other six days, I can go and do my work? Because God, I mean, he was really generous. He said, six days, you go do whatever you need to do. You work hard. Go produce. But on the seventh day, let's keep it holy. Let's keep it Sabbath. Let's keep it a day of rest. One of the things that my family has done just to uh, continue to remember the Sabbath, we do ours on Saturday, and um, and uh, we try to come together. We try to get off electronics. We, you know, try to have a different space of awareness for each other. But one of the things that we do, because we're all going all over the place usually, is uh, to have this candle. We light this candle. We call it the Sabbath candle, and it helps us to remember that that day is different. And so we may still be moving around, getting some things done, uh, but we're trying to have an intention of rest and refueling, and we're trying to be aware of God and each other in a different kind of way. And so the last thing that I think I'm really hearing from God for myself and hopefully for you all is keep resting. Take, take some time to really rest in this crazy, crazy time. All right. That's all I got. Number four, everybody cool. Thumbs up. Beautiful. Amazing. Um, those are kind of the things that I had for you today. And John, uh, I'll let you lead from here. Um, beautiful yeah. stuff here. Love it.